And now I'm going to be honest, the only thoughts that were running through my mind as I was watching this whole sequence was, wow, saris are kind of hard to take off and put back on yourself though. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be making another TV show review kind of a video. It's been a while since I've done a video like this, but I figured I had to do it for Never Have I Ever's fourth and final season. Never Have I Ever has such a special place in my heart. It was the first teen young adult show about an Indian American teenage girl that I had ever seen, and it was also the first TV show about an Indian American teenage girl that I saw get really popular in mainstream media. Also, I made a video on the third season a little less than a year ago, and it was like my third video on this channel back when I made videos on an iPhone, and it was the first video of mine to do well, which gave me the encouragement and motivation to keep posting, so it has a special place in my heart. Even though many South Asians have questioned the Presentation of Mindy Kaling's work, Davy is definitely a better written and developed character. I remember feeling unsure about how I felt after watching season two, but after season three and watching Davy's character development, I really grown to love and appreciate her character. So I'll be giving my thoughts on season four, which came out today. As I usually do with these kinds of videos, I'm going to give a quick little recap, talk about the things I like, the things I dislike, and then I will discuss the ending. So season three ended with Fabiola dating Addison, Trent staying back another year and staying with Eleanor, Paxton graduating and going to ASU, Ben potentially having this thing with his art classmate Margot, Kamla moving out and being with Manish, and Davy having ended her relationships with Paxton and Des goes to Ben's place to hook up with him. So season four starts off with this painfully awkward scene where Ben and Davy had just hooked up and then Ben essentially tells her to leave. And then he ghosts her all summer and comes back in the fall dating Margot. Davy and Margot get into a couple of arguments and then when someone vandalizes Davy's car, she accuses Margot. It ends up being this other kid at their school named Ethan, but because of all the conflict that it caused, Margot wants nothing to do with Davy and hates her and Ben stops talking to Davy for a while. In fact, Ben told Davy that they're too competitive and insecure for each other and they're just going to keep hurting one another. Then Davy dates Ethan for a bit, but then they break up because they're incompatible and then Davy goes on to live her not so best single life until the very end. In terms of things I like, I think hands down the best thing about the season is watching how much Davy had grown. I mean, looking back at seasons one and two, good god, there was some truly questionable behavior. And there were surely some moments where she had snapped, but I also don't think it would have been entirely realistic if she hadn't. But you can literally see that she has less frequent visits to her therapist this season. She had a good apology to Margot. That is before Margot saw her therapy exercise. Her saying, I accept that when Ben's said they shouldn't be together. Literally, all the scenes she had with Paxton, how she handled her conflict with Fabiola, and also her encouraging her mom to date. There was a lot of growth and we love to see it. Also loved how, as always, the show incorporates a lot of Indian culture, and the show found a new way to do that this season by showing Kamala and Davy's performance at the end and Pati's wedding, because Indian weddings are immaculate. I also appreciate Paxton's storyline, which I don't know how people feel about. He actually got a lot of character development in this show compared to the other characters in Davy's life, which I think is interesting. Basically, he goes to ASU and he does not vibe with the people there at all, so he quits college and he goes back to Sherman Oaks High School working as an assistant swim coach, which is essentially how the show brings Paxton back into the picture. Not gonna lie with you, I questioned this a lot in the beginning because two weeks is not a lot of time. Also, didn't mentioned transferring as an option. This also felt so separate from the rest of the show at first, but I think the more I watched it, the more it made sense to me. He felt like he peaked in high school and he was really afraid of change, so he ran back to what was familiar and comfortable to him. He just needed to realize that he's still going to be figuring things out as a young adult and that he shouldn't quit so easily. At the same time, I thought it was strange how he was graduated and working as a coach at the high school and yet still went with Trent to parties and even hosted one. I'm just glad that Lindsay voiced what I was thinking at a certain point. I also love that Nalini's romantic life came full circle. So in season two, Nalini was casually seeing this other dermatologist that she had really good chemistry with. However, at the time, Davy was in the worst place she had been in since right after her dad died, and also it hadn't even been that long since her dad died. So when she found out, she naturally freaked out. So Nalini just decided it wasn't the right time in her life or Davy's life for her to be seeing other people. But in season three and season four, Davy grew and healed a lot, so when Davy realized that her mom likes Margot's dad, she decided to help her out and then Nalini started seeing him. And I like that they brought that back full circle because it was a nice bow to tie on the ending of Nalini's story. In terms of the things I disliked, 
I really feel like they kind of fumbled the bag on the side plots this time. Some of the side plots from the previous seasons that I've really enjoyed have been Kamala dealing with sexism in the workplace and the pressures to get married, Paxton trying to become a better student, Fabiola exploring her sexuality, but this season I felt like we were lacking some good juicy side plots. We really didn't get much Kamala, like her moving to Maryland was probably like three to five minutes of screen time. Patti having a boyfriend and getting married was kind of random, not gonna lie. I didn't hate it, but I felt like they could have done something more interesting with Patti and Kamala, especially because Patti was such a funny character in the previous seasons and I feel like this took away from that and also their family dynamic which is one of my favorite parts of the show. We got zero Anissa. I think she was in three scenes and had like two lines and I want justice. And I understand that this show is about baby and given it's its last season they had to sacrifice the screen time of some of the other characters in order to have enough time to fully wrap up baby's story. But also with that I wonder why they couldn't have just made the season a little longer to have good subplots that would wrap up the stories of the other characters a little bit better. I also had some thoughts about the college related things this season. I feel like I usually do with shows because it's never written accurately or it's usually written in a way that makes me question it a lot. When Fabiola got into Princeton early, there was this monitor outside the school that was displaying college admissions announcements and I was wondering why they had that. Because it wasn't decision day, it was only the acceptances for early applicants. Also, Fabiola didn't even accept Princeton's offer so was the school just posting what every kid got accepted to? Because I'm pretty sure what you get accepted to and what you get rejected from is private until you make the decision. Also, my mind can be changed about this, but I found it very unrealistic that Melanie didn't know that Davy only applied to Ivy League schools until after decisions came out. Basically, Davy only applies to Ivy League schools, so then she gets rejected from all of them except for Princeton, which she gets waitlisted from, and then when Melanie finds out about this, she gets mad at Davy for only applying to Ivy League schools instead of match schools and safety schools, and honestly, I didn't think that tracked because Davy's mom has always been really involved in her life, especially academics. From pushing Davy to be more academically focused, to having her talk to certain teachers to get college recommendations, to nearly sending her to that program that Davy got into last season, she's always been involved and at the very least informed. So you would think at the very least she would be like, okay, you handle your application, but what schools are you applying to? But she didn't. She was surprised to hear that Davy only applied to Ivy League schools, and I was like, wait, what? But I suppose they wrote it that way for the plot. I feel like since I'm on the subject of college, this isn't a plot I disliked, I thought it was fine, but I want to talk about Fabiola applying to Davy's dream school. I just want to know how people feel about it, truly because as someone who, despite looking 15 to the person who does my hair, is years past applying to colleges, it really isn't the end-all be-all in terms of where you get accepted to and where you go. Also, college admissions can truly be arbitrary, there are people who got into schools that most other people didn't think they would get into, and then there are people who got rejected from schools that most other other people thought they would get into. And you can't claim a school, obviously. I mean, I think it's worse that Fabiola lied, but I want to hear people's thoughts just because I feel like I can see both sides. I feel satisfied about the ending, though, because I think Fabiola and Davy ended up eventually handling it in a mature way. And lastly, I'm wondering how people feel about Ethan this season, because... I really thought that Michael Cimino would have a bigger role this season and would also be there for longer. But for the few episodes he was a part of, it just kind of felt like filler. Also Trent breaking up with Eleanor and then Eleanor also being into Ethan at the same time as Davey also just felt like filler because they resolved that really fast. I don't know if that's going to be controversial and I don't feel super strongly about disliking it, but I was more just kind of like... Okay, but now let's talk about the ending and Ben and Davy. So in the end, Davy gets into Princeton, Ben gets into Columbia, Paxton is going to go back to ASU for teaching, Eleanor decides to pursue acting, Fabiola decides to go to Howard University, Melanie is seeing Margot's dad, Kamala and Manish are moving to Maryland, and Patti just got married. I really wish we had an actual graduation moment. It really feels like we fast forwarded to the whole graduation thing. In the very end, Patti's wedding is during the same weekend that Davy goes to college and Patti decides to invite all of Davy's friends. So Paxton is there, Anise is there, Fabiola and Eleanor are there. But Ben is not there because he has this internship in New York City, but then he flies all the way back to California to surprise Davy. He confesses his love to her, they hook up with each other, and then they decide to actually be together. And now I'm gonna be honest, the only thoughts that were running through my mind as I was watching this whole sequence was, wow, saris are kind of hard to take off and put back on yourself though. And how did her Jimkas not get stuck in her hair? So team Ben won. Honestly, I kind of felt deep down in season three that it was either 
going to be team Ben or team no one. I just really felt like they closed the book on Paxton and Davy in season three when Paxton graduated, and I kept going back and forth between being team Ben and being team no one, because it would have been underwhelming, honestly, after four seasons of who's it gonna be for her to end up alone, but also sometimes the writers made it difficult to be on team Ben, like when Ben told Davy to leave and then ghosted her, or every time I remember that Ben and Davy had said some out-of-pocket, racist, anti-semitic comments to each other in the past, which is just like the issue with enemies to lovers, as much as I'm guilty of liking the concept of it, it's really easy to make questionable to say the least. That being said, Ben is Davy's most compatible partner, the actors also had the best chemistry with each other, it was clearly a slow burn so this ending is what made the most sense. In the very last scene, when John McEnroe is giving his last narration, he says, signing off, for now. And I wonder what that means. Are we getting a spinoff? Are we getting a college series? I don't know. So those are my thoughts on Never Have I Ever's fourth and final season. Overall, I like the season. I think there were some parts of it that could have been better. If I were to rank the seasons, I would probably say that season three was the best season, and then season four, then season one, and then I would probably say that season two is at the bottom for me. Let me know how you would rank the seasons, if there's anything I missed in this video, or if you just agree or disagree on anything I said, because I'm always open to being convinced into thinking about things differently. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already.